Hello, this is Josh, AJ Mirwald mate, with another Science and Sailing. This is Watershed Part 8, and you might want to get your nose plugs today because we're going to be digging through some fertilizer to see how it impacts our watersheds. Now, on the surface, fertilizers are not such a bad thing. They actually help plants grow bigger, faster, and stronger. And if they're used in a controlled and responsible manner, they help farmers to feed the masses with minimal impact to our environment. Unfortunately, many farms make two or one mistake. Either they use so much excessive fertilizer that the plants are not able to use it, and so that fertilizer leaches into the soil and it gets into our groundwater, or they don't take the necessary precautions that limit runoff so that when it rains or the snow melts, the fertilizer simply runs and washes into our watersheds. Now, the two main nutrients that are responsible for rapid plant growth in fertilizers are nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, excessive nitrogen can actually form toxic gases like ammonia and nitrogen oxides, and they float up into the sky, and it's stuck in the clouds, and when it rains, it falls back down and poisons our watersheds. Another thing that excessive nitrogen can do if it gets in the water is cause a birth defect that makes it so that babies cannot use oxygen, and that's obviously fatal. But more commonly, at elevated levels, these two nutrients, nitrates and phosphates, cause something called eutrophication or algal blooms. But what does that mean? So when fertilizers enter the watershed, do you think that they stop working? No, they continue to make plants grow. Now imagine a small pond nestled by a large farm. Now the pond has a healthy population of plants and animals. The plant numbers there are dictated by the amount of food and nutrients that are available for them to consume. Now when it rains, much of the fertilizers run from the farm and go into the pond. All of a sudden, the floating algae that's at the surface of the pond has a surplus of nutrients and they begin to reproduce at an uncontrollable rate, quickly covering the surface of the pond. So have you guys ever seen a pond that's covered with tiny green plants or like a green slime? Well, that's that algae and that's an algal bloom. And when this ceiling of algae blocks most of the sunlight from reaching the plants that grow beneath it, those deeper dwelling plants die because they can't do photosynthesis. Now those dying plants provide food for bacteria and microbes and they begin to eat these dying plants and reproduce. What do you think these microbes and bacteria breathe? Oxygen. Now the rain stops and the nutrients cease to flow into that pond. Now suddenly this huge population of algae has nothing to eat so they begin to die. And what do you think eats them? More microbes. And these microbes breathe oxygen. So these tiny microbes do the exact same thing that the algae did. They see an overabundance of food for them. That's that dying algae. And so they, in turn, reproduce at an uncontrollable rate. Now, covering the underside of the ceiling of dying algae are layers of microbes that are breathing all the oxygen that the other animals in that pond need to survive. Now, since these microbes are small, many of them are anaerobic, they don't need as much oxygen to survive. So the larger animals that need more and can't tolerate the anaerobic, hypoxic, or otherwise known as low oxygen environment begin to die. And that provides even more food for the microbes who reproduce even more as more and more fish die. And it just becomes a vicious cycle that keeps going over and over again until in a relatively short period of time, all the larger animals in that pond are dead. Now this is known as a dead zone and around the world, but especially in the United States, there are dead zones everywhere and their numbers are growing. Fertilizer contribution is not just limited to large-scale farming. So imagine every private lawn and garden that uses fertilizers, those are gonna be contributing to the amount of nitrates and phosphates in our watersheds. So though a single person's lawn is nothing in the grand scheme of things, when you combine the millions of people who are using fertilizers in their yards, the impact is actually quite massive. 
Moreover, the effects of algal blooms are not confined to freshwater ecosystems. In fact, these algal blooms reap death and destruction in our ocean marine life as well. So just look at the Gulf of Mexico and Florida. What do you think is the largest watershed in the United States? Well, it's the Mississippi. And there are thousands of farms and many lawns and gardens whose fertilizers wash into the Mississippi each and every time it rains. Now, where does that water in the Mississippi end up? In that Gulf of Mexico. And how many of you viewers have ever heard of the red tide? Well, the red tide is a horrible, um, harmful algal bloom. And it's usually occurring annually. And not only does it create that low oxygen environment that I described earlier, but it also releases deadly neurotoxins um, into the water and even into the air. So the Gulf or the Florida red tide is led by a plant-like algae called Carinia brevis, which releases brevitoxins, and they cause gastrointestinal and neurological problems when they're eaten or absorbed, and they even cause respiratory problems like asthma attacks in humans when they're breathed, if someone's going for a jog on the beach, for instance. So in 2017, the Florida red tide lasted an astonishing 10 months spanning 100 miles of coastline and stretching miles out into the sea. An unprecedented number of animals are left dead and floating on the Gulf beaches, including thousands of fish like mullet, catfish, pufferfish, snook, trout, grunt, and even goliath groupers, and bigger animals like sea turtles, and manatees, and dolphins. So the scene of the beach was like a big massacre. And as our human population continues to skyrocket and our demand for food production explodes, we'll be using more and more fertilizers in order to supply the, necess the necessity of humanity, which is food and crops. So what are some ways that we might improve the ways that we use fertilizer and how might we diminish their effects on our watershed? Please provide those solutions in the comment section below. And this has been Josh bringing the Bayshore to you.